Hi, this is Gordon with Maxwell PC Magazine. Hopefully you've watched our other video introducing you to these really cool brand new four Nook Bricks style mini PCs. Real machines in incredibly compact package. This one has a projector, really cool. Not the brightest projector though, so uh, it'd be great if they made a brighter one. But I'm going to show you how to build your own because a lot of people like to build their own. So rather than these units, which all you basically do, unscrew it, and RAM, and MSATA, maybe a network card in the Intel units, and you're done. Let's actually build our own NUC. Does it make any sense? This is a NUC motherboard. This is actually the exact same motherboard that is in the original, one of the original NUCs. It's an Ivory Bridge mobile processor, i3. It's like, I think about a 1.8, 1.3 gigahertz. Not super fast, but very quiet. This is basically inside this box. You can actually buy this motherboard, um, not very easily, Amazon has it, there's a few other small vendors that have it, by itself. Intel doesn't actually package it to be sold to you, know, you and I, you know, Joe Builder, but there's a lot of companies buying these 10 packs of these motherboards, breaking them up, selling them to people. As I understand it, Intel will honor the warranty on them, so uh, I don't think Intel is fully committed to building your own NUC, but I'm gonna show you what it's like if you do actually do it. I'm gonna use Silver Stones, PT14 chassis. As you can see, it's basically about the size of the original Ivor Bitch Nook. I've already removed the screws to make this go a lot faster. Four on the bottom, rubberized feet. They come out. An empty box. You can see the cooling here for the CPU, actually. Uh, this actually, I believe, goes to the um, M SATA drive because they do tend to get hot. There is actually a small fan that is powered off the motherboard as well. Before you can mount this motherboard though, if you do get it with the built-in Intel cooler, you'll have to remove the heat, uh, heat sink fan. To do that, you basically undo two screws on the fan, unplug the fan. Now we have access. There's another screw here. You're going to undo. And then two screws for the actual heatsink. I'm not sure if this can be bought without the heatsink, but it's kind of nifty to have it too if you ever need to run this with additional cooling in a, your own project. Okay, and my, this of course is a Haswell processor, an i3. I'm sorry, this is actually the Ivor Bridge i3. Oh, and here we have your chipsets. So you take this baby. See if I do this right. You plug in your fan. It is keyed so you can only go one way, but if you're unsure, don't force it. One rule, never force things. Computers, I'm just going to stuff this in here, not worry about where the wires go for now. Once that's in, oh, you know, actually, I thought I forgot a very key step. Actually, of course, you're gonna if you besides building your own, if you do this on your regular nooks, you're gonna take your RAM modules. This is DDR3. Um, you're gonna slide them in. If you've never seen this, just like a laptop, they go in at an angle. Push them into the edge connector. You can't see it. Clip it down. I'm actually I forgot to put the other one in. Let's do that behind it, which I can do. We'll do this the right way then. You should do the bottom one in if you're doing two modules. And you should do two memory modules, otherwise you won't be running in dual channel mode and you will take a hit in 3D performance. So again, I'm going at an angle. Push evenly on both sides. Edge connector goes in. And see, people will try to push them straight in. They go in at an angle. They go down to they click. This is a Wi-Fi card. Same thing, push it in a slight angle, I'm pushing it into the edge connector, can't be seen. Push the card down, screw it in. <clears throat> this is an MSATA drive, this is a standard storage used in most Ultrabooks, most laptops these days. Uh, it's an SSD obviously. Same thing, you remove this.
push it in, lock it in place, screw it in. But one thing I'm going to point out to you, on this Wi-Fi card you will see two antenna ports. Yeah. Most vendors who sell these Wi-Fi cards do not sell antennas or the leads. You're going to have to go to Uncle Jim's computer shack somewhere on the internet to actually get the antennas, whether they're internal patch connectors or external rubber ducts and the wires that will have to run out of this case. On all of the standard nooks, it's actually integrated directly into the chassis, which is really nice. You don't have the rubber ducts on them. But assuming you actually have the antennas and the leads, I don't. You put those on, you'll, you'll put the leads on carefully, probably let the, uh, and if you're using a patch antenna, you'll stick it inside the chassis, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Fortunately, this nook does have ethernet, so you can use it even if you don't have a Wi-Fi card. Now these are three steps you would do on any of the other nooks. Um, you would have to add your own storage, MSATA, as well as your own RAM. Now again, I'm going to take this. Flip it over. Great. I guess if we want to be sure, I can run a couple of these screws underneath. There, now it's in place. Tuck the wire in. I'm not going to worry about that right now. This obviously goes, this heat pipe goes on the processor. I have, this has been in this unit, that's why this thermal pad has been used already. Oh, one more thing, I almost forgot. Silverstone actually gives you this cool little button right there on the power switch. And you're basically done. You would just add your screws back in. There's also four screws that go on the edge of this. like so and that's it you've built your own nut pretty cool especially for people who like to do their own DIY stuff um, there's punch outs for the rubber duck antenna style if you get that now should you do this at this point I don't think you should I mean honestly I, I know why I love to build my own computers <clears throat> I get to add the parts I get to pick what goes in there all that stuff I get to pick a chassis it's kind of a cool concept. It doesn't really apply that much to nooks right now because really, I mean, there isn't much different with these, right? I mean, it's still just a small box. They're not looking crazy. And the last thing is the price. Uh, I'm going to look at the price. I can't remember it, but building this entire machine here, if I added an operating system, SSD, everything, comes up to about $600, $682, basically $700 for this box completed. If I went out and bought the original Ivory Bridge, um, Nook, which is still on the market, it's basically um, $560. So it's a hundred, it's almost $200 more to build your own Nook. So it just doesn't make sense. And the main reason is Intel doesn't know what to do with DIY Nooks. Uh, the motherboards are really expensive, and that's the main reason this, this unit is so expensive. It should be a lot cheaper. It should be cheaper than this if you think about it. But because you're paying a premium to get the motherboard, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool you've built your own, but you know, to save $150 to $200 buying this, it's hard to justify. So maybe one day when Intel decides to really get serious, or maybe Gigabyte decides, or Asus, or whoever else gets into this market, it'll make sense. But right now, it makes a lot more sense just to buy a bare bones box, you know, one of these Gigabyte Bricks units, super fast, or one of these, an older one, or even a Haswell. Just, you'll, it makes a lot more sense, and you'll save money. So, anyway, this is Gordon Ung. More videos at MaximumPC.com.